Hi, welcome to another episode of Broadcasting Northwest Florida. I'm Jennifer Connolly with Florida's Great Northwest. Today, I'm thrilled to have another one of our partners featured on today's series. And today I have Nicole Gieslawson. She's the executive director of the Haas Center at the University of West Florida. They are an incredible partner of ours and truly assist us in, in so many ways. And I'm excited to have Nicole here to talk about some of those. So Nicole, can you um, first kick us off with a little bit of a explanation about what the Haas Center is? Jennifer, thank you for that. And it's such a pleasure to be with you this morning. So the Haas Center for more than 27 years has been providing thought leaders, both in government and in the private sector with reliable economic and demographic data. You know, more recently, we've added industrial innovation to our service mix, and that includes 3D design services in this fabulous lab that I'm standing in here in downtown Pensacola's Museum of Commerce. Um, and we help customers, uh, entrepreneurs, businesses, um, all sorts of creators to we help them bring their products to life in 3D. So that includes uh, 3D printing, mold making. Um, I've already mentioned the CAD design services, but, but our team of students from mostly mechanical engineering do a fabulous job of working with business and industry. <clears throat> Nicole, thank you for sharing with our audience about the Haas Center, and we are so excited to learn more. So let's take some time for you to share with our audience about the services that the Haas Center offers. Thank you, Jennifer. I mentioned that we curate data at the Haas Center. 27 years ago when we, when we started the center, data was not widely available. Today it's ubiquitous, right? Um, you can go to just about any site and download information, but that wasn't the case many years ago. Um, Fast forward to 2022, and the way in which we broadcast information has changed. Um, very often we'll collect it from the primary source like the Department of Economic Opportunity here in the state of Florida, um, but then we, we broadcast it in the form of a data dashboard or a visualization in Tableau. And I'm going to share with you just a few samples. So, so these come from our tourism indicators on the Haas Center's website and that's hwas.uwf.edu. And if you navigate to the right-hand side and click on regional economic indicators, uh, you'll have the opportunity to view the tourism section. So, so here we are, uh, this data goes back to uh, 2011 and it's not seasonalized. So you can see all the peaks and valleys that occur in the off season and the high season and the summer period here in, in the Northwest Florida region or Florida's great Northwest, right, Jennifer? Right. Um, you'll see in, in the most recent uh, summer period that Destin and Fort Walton Beach really had a banner year and Pensacola wasn't far behind. I'm um, gonna fast forward here to bed tax collections where you see just a little bit different picture. Walton County and Bay County, they are knocking it out of the park, right? So while many visitors are, are flying into Escambia County and and landing at our beautiful airport, they're not always staying with us. So you see that reflected in the bed tax sales. Of course, Walton County, Okaloosa County, and, and Bay County, your home, Jennifer, um, you have many more beds and, and those beds cost a little bit more than they do in Escambia County, but, but your community is reaping the benefit of those bed tax collections because that, that goes back into your, your infrastructure, your education system and all those good things. So. I feel like this is an opportunity for growth for Escambia and Santa Rosa counties. And it's just one way that we help to uh, advise and inform local thought leaders. I'll uh, also call your attention to uh, some of our survey research. Um, we've been blessed with the honor and privilege of running the city satisfaction survey for many years here in Pensacola. And uh, that's been one of the, the primary data collection opportunities we've had for about seven years now. Uh, we do similar survey research across the state of Florida, really. We have a unique platform um, that the university subscribes to. It's known as Qualtrics. 
that allows us to efficiently disseminate surveys um, across email addresses, uh, websites, social media. But we can also utilize that platform to do focus groups and collect that information electronically through those focus groups, whether, whether they're online or in person. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so that has become um, one of our core services at the Haas Center. And of course, the traditional economic impact modeling is still a, a, a valuable part of the center. We have four different platforms to, to model uh, a given geography's economy, one of which is REMI, and that is most widely used by academic economists around the country. And I, I, I'd like to say that we partner with economists both on campus and off campus to ensure that our economic model models are, are accurate and, uh, and well, well designed. Uh, the other platform that, that we use is Implan. And I like Implan because it also gives us an opportunity to see the tax implications for those models. Um, and uh, getting back to the data dashboards, we also have uh, host, hosted these for many of our partners in the community like Achieve Escambia. Uh, and Achieve Healthy Escarosa, they came together with the Haas Center to create what's known as AchieveDashboard.org. And that website has 140 different data visualizations that deal with quality of place, uh, workforce and demographics, economic vitality, as well as health and education. So I invite your listeners to log in and check out that dashboard. And I'll also give a shout out to the Florida Chamber we host and, and uh, help to create what's known as the Florida Gap Map. And that examines uh, poverty under the age of 18 for every county in the state of Florida, as well as third grade reading scores. So um, again, Google that, it's Gap Map, uh, Florida Chamber, and you'll see some of our, uh, our team's handiwork there. Thinking about our team, I'd like to give a shout out to the the data visualization team led by our senior statistician, Mariah Kill. Uh, she helps to train and, um, and manage a group of, of college business students who help her with those data visualizations uh, on our websites. Nicole, thank you for sharing with us uh, some of the you know, more traditional services of the Haas Center, but something that I know you get very excited about and I do as well, is what you're doing around industrial innovation. And a lot of it has to do with where you are standing right now. So can you uh, describe more about it for our audience? Jennifer, thank you so much. And, and so C3D or science, engineering and art right here in, in three dimensions, right? Is an additive manufacturing laboratory that was funded by the Florida legislature. It, we've just celebrated our fourth year anniversary here in C3D. And I'm happy to say that private industry is, is really leaning forward in this particular facility um, with their ideas, their entrepreneurial um, endeavors. And more importantly, they're bringing in meaningful projects for our students and our engineer who helps to support the lab um, to ideate around and bring to life. I wanna share one of those projects and it's a capstone project hosted by the Hal Marcus College of Science and Engineering right here in, in our laboratory in downtown Pensacola in the Museum of Commerce. So it's a recycling project and uh, they're recycling very common water bottles. Here's a Callaway Blue spring water bottle. Um, also, another common one here, a Perrier bottle, makes a nice Argo color palette, right? So they crush this material, and after they crush it, they dry it, and the clear bottles look something like this. And at that point, when it's good and dry, they run those pellets or flakes through, through a machine that will then liquefy it, and then spool it. And we're able to take that spool, place it on one of our 3D printers, and I'm gonna adjust the camera here. You can see one of the, the MakerBot replicators over there across the room. And so, so we run that filament through the 3D printer and we create little products. Um, for instance, this one is, is a set of earrings designed for our Director of Business Administration, Angela 
sanders. And so you can see that the, the really nice quality of the filament that um, it's provided a lot of nice detail there. And that's not easy to, to get to. And so I really compliment the faculty members, uh, Dr. Brad Regis and his student team that's working on the recycle project because, you know, petroleum based plastics are kind of uh, challenging to work with. And uh, the equipment that we use is, is rather unique. Um, and and the, the whole process is not one that you can uh, find on the internet. You can't just download that process and follow it. It's something that they've been um, really examining and becoming better and better at. You know, this is just one of many products that, that have come out of the lab. Um, there are others that we're working on right now with, with private industry. And, and uh, we do expect that uh, a couple of invention disclosures are, are moving moving through the pipeline right now. And I'm, I'm very proud of the team for, for getting to that point in, in, in their services here in the Haas Center and C3D. Um, we have uh, multiple technologies in here. We can scan products and then 3D print them. Here's one example of that. I mentioned that we're in the downtown Pensacola area, the historic district. So this is pottery that came off of an old ship in the bay. And the team scanned that poverty that pottery and uh, then replicated it in in a couple different parts and uh, I just think this is a great example of of scanning technology 3d printing and then kids can come in here and pick it up and shake it and 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 look at the at the the information that it holds and and we've got several examples of this in fact the largest 3d print that we've accomplished here in c3d is the deluna anchor and that anchor is over 15 feet long. So we scanned it in the Pensacola Museum of History, then um, recreated it online, and then started 3D printing it in 18 different sections, reassembled it, and now it's on campus. Uh, the, the 3D printed component is on campus in the Archaeology Institute. So just another way that, that we provide uh, services to our academic community as well as the the broader community here in in Florida's Great Northwest. Oh, that is so exciting, Nicole. I I mean, it just seems like there's endless possibilities, not just for the students who are working in the lab, but really going back to this is a, a service that you're able to offer for entrepreneurs existing businesses and the companies that we are talking to about Northwest Florida, this is also available to them. So Absolutely. yeah, so we are so grateful for the investment that you're making in Northwest Florida. And we uh, just thank you for being part of uh, our broadcasting Northwest Florida series today. And thank you all for joining.